storytelling. It's what makes us human. It's what distinguishes us from every other known life form in our universe. It's what's turned this rock from a planet into a world. It's what has enabled us to achieve everything we've achieved for 200,000 years as Homo sapiens. Storytelling is what allows us to learn from the past and to come together to do new things that we couldn't do on our own, like building or farming, manufacturing, creating technology, putting on conferences. No one but humans can do these things. Because while other species can communicate in basic signals and instructions, they cannot tell stories. Storytelling is what allows us to say, did you know? Storytelling is what allows us to say, I can imagine a future where. Storytelling is what allows us to say, if you look at it this way. Storytelling is what enables us to convince each other of the commonalities that allow us to come together to achieve great things. So in this age of more and more people attempting to achieve great things as entrepreneurs, as startups, as businesses who want to think bigger than just their bottom line, it's no wonder that we look to storytelling to help. Because if storytelling has the power to bring people together with other people to achieve transformational things, then storytelling also has the power to bring people together with businesses and brands to achieve transformational things. And I want to tell you how. And I want to start by talking about the most popular story of all. Just about every fable or legend or movie or book that's ever captured the imaginations of millions of people is the same kind of story. I'm talking about the three-act structure story. You probably already know what that is, and if you don't, it's going to sound pretty familiar. Three-act structure stories are split into three parts. In the first part, someone's going about a normal day in an ordinary world, when suddenly something happens and it shatters all of that normality and ordinariness, and it sets them off on a new journey, confronting that challenge, solving the mystery, defeating the bad guy, capturing the heart of the love interest. In Act Two, we follow the characters as they confront their challenge, and they go through all kinds of adventures and plot twists on the way to Act Three, where everything comes to a climax, they emerge victorious, the world is put to rights, and everyone lives happily ever after. We love that story. Just about every single one of the world's most beloved books and movies and TV shows and plays and TED Talks are that same story. It engages our emotions and our brain chemistry in a perfect way that never gets old. And you know what? That same simple story structure can be used to capture the power of storytelling to achieve transformational things in business. Let me give you an example. In 2004, at a big ad agency in London, a strategic planner by the name of Olivia Johnson was working on the Dove brand. Dove had recently commissioned a study where they sought to better understand women's relationship with beauty. What that study told them was that women had an increasingly difficult relationship with the kind of beauty that had been normalized in decades of advertising in the media. The study showed that women felt beholden to an unrealistic standard of beauty that few could ever hope to achieve. And that study showed that just 9% of women considered themselves attractive. Now, Olivia was so affected by this research that she devised a strategy for the Dove brand that involved them rallying against this idea of beauty and instead championing a new, kinder, more real definition of beauty. Her strategy was brilliant, but Olivia had a problem. Most of the senior managers on the Dove business were men. They were men who had built a huge global beauty brand the way that everyone had, using airbrushed images of perfect-looking, skinny women. So can you imagine rocking up and telling them to just abandon that tried-and-proven approach? And not only that, telling them to spend their budget crusading against the very thing that had made them successful in the first place? The reality was that her strategy, no matter how big-hearted, no matter how well-founded, would have a rake-thin chance of being accepted by Dove. So Olivia did something extraordinary. She found that many of those Dove managers had daughters. She secretly contacted those daughters 
And she interviewed them on camera, talking to her about how imperfect and unbeautiful those images of beauty in the media made them feel. Then, in the presentation of the strategy, she played those tapes to their fathers. <laughs> and then she talked to them about a world where girls and women did not feel that way, a future where the definition of beauty had changed to become something that all women could relate to and aspire to, a future where 100% of women considered themselves attractive. And then she told them about the way that Dove could bring about that future with a campaign for real beauty. What Olivia did was she told those Dove managers a three-act story. In the first act, she cast their daughters as characters in a world that was crushing their self-esteem. In the second act, she showed Dove teaming up with those characters to confront the challenge with the campaign for real beauty. And in the third act, she showed them a future where the problem had been solved, the world was put to rights. And their daughters and granddaughters could live happily ever after. By doing what she did, Olivia made her strategy impossible to say no to. Whereas without that story, it would have been virtually impossible to say yes. This is the power of storytelling. And it's something that I've been exposed to my entire working life. And so often I've seen big brands and big agencies. Harness the power of storytelling in electrifying ways, and the only thing that's troubled me about that is that the power of storytelling has been expensive, and because of that, it's remained the domain of companies that are very big and very rich, and can afford to run big marketing campaigns made by big ad agencies. At the same time, what we've all seen around us is an explosion of entrepreneurialism. So many smaller, younger companies. Reshaping our definition of commerce and work and innovation and life itself, and although many of them deserve to be, they are not yet big or rich. They cannot afford to hire big ad agencies and run big marketing campaigns. But I believe that they should, and they can still have access to the power of storytelling, because storytelling is not only powerful under the auspices of ad agencies and marketing campaigns. And storytelling does not need a budget to be powerful. It can be just as powerful. In a conversation with someone you want to hire, or in a conversation with a journalist you want to write about you, or in a pitch to someone you want to invest in you, or at a sampling stand at a trade show, and it can be just as powerful whether you're a business or a community group or a charity. All you need to do is use that three-act structure to tell your own story. Let me give you an example. I'm going to use a company that was founded in 2008 by two broke friends. Three years later, it was worth a billion dollars. That company's Airbnb. Not only did Airbnb have a great product, they also had a great story about how and why that product came into existence and the better future that they believed that that product could create. They had three acts. In Act One, roommates Brian and Joe couldn't make rent. So, out of desperation, they had this idea: Why don't we put an inflatable mattress on the floor of our living room, turn it into a bed and breakfast to make a few bucks? When they did, they found that people who stayed at their bed and breakfast had a better, more meaningful time than they usually did when they stayed in a hotel, and they had a flash of insight: what if travel could be more human? In Act Two, they created their website, AirBedAndBreakfast.com. It connected guests and hosts in cities all over the world. It gave hosts a way to create an experience for their guests that was less like being a tourist and more like being a local. And in Act Three, they envisaged a future where people could easily find community, even in the most foreign of places, where people around the world felt like they could belong anywhere. Just like in every three-act story, Act One is where the founders, something happens to the founders, disrupts their lives and sets them off on a new journey. Act Two is the creation of a product that's different or better, and in Act Three, the widespread adoption of that product has caused a change for the better. The world's been put to rights. And everyone lives happily ever after. And the great thing is that any business can have a story just like this one. Act one is your history, how and why you came to be. Act two is your product and how it's different or better. And act three is the ambition that you have for the change you want to create in the world. You can apply this story to any company because any company, no matter how small or how young, still has those three things: a history, a product, and ambition. In 2003, after General Motors recalled and destroyed all of their EV1 electric cars. Two guys, Mark and Martin, they felt the world needed a car company that was 100% committed to electric cars. They founded Tesla, and Elon Musk joined the company, creating desirable electric vehicles. 
and they're working toward a world that's transitioned out of fossil fuels and into electric vehicles. Three acts, a product, a history, and an ambition. And I bet if you have a business, you're already thinking about what your three acts are. And that's the beauty of it. You don't need a marketing campaign or an ad agency to have a story. Your story's already there. But I bet right now you're only telling people act two. Act two is your product and why it's better. We are great at act two. Everyone's doing act two. Telling people about their product and why it's better. But imagine if you only showed people act two of a movie. Sure, they'd, they'd understand what was going on. But their empathy for the characters and where they came from, their emotional payoff at the outcome would be non-existent. They'd comprehend, but they wouldn't care. And that's what great stories do. They make people care. You can give people act two, and sometimes they'll buy your product. When they hear act one and act three, they don't just buy the product, they join the cause. And when people join a cause, that's when businesses start working in unison with their customers to achieve something great together. In 2017, I was struggling with my own problem. Three years earlier, I started a company called Previously Unavailable. We help other companies, mostly those big, rich ones, create exciting new products and brands. And over the years, we'd also had a stream of startups and smaller companies come to us and help us, uh, ask us for our help with their brand story and their brand strategy. And these were companies that we were inspired by and who we really wanted to help. The trouble is, for these smaller, younger companies, a consultancy or agency model is just much, much too expensive. Brand strategy has always been time intensive, and it ends up costing in the tens of thousands of dollars. And I just couldn't conscionably recommend to most smaller businesses that they spend that kind of money with us, but I hated turning them away. I was increasingly excited by how many amazing visionary companies were starting all around me and increasingly depressed at how few of them I could help. And then one Saturday morning, I had that moment when it hits you. And I spend the week at, weekend at work trying to answer a question. Could we take our process and put that on a platform that any business could use to develop their story and strategy on their own for a fraction of the cost? It turns out the answer is yes. And so I've spent the last two years creating the world's first brand story development platform. It's called StoryTech. And with it, any company can use an, a video-led online process to create a world-class brand story and a strategy to tell it for an order of magnitude less than what it would traditionally cost. You know, most startups are way better at creating a world-changing product than they are at convincing the world to let them change it. And your lives and mine remain unimproved by these people because they can never quite find the right words to pitch what they're doing in a way that makes other people care about it as much as they do. And I want to change that because I can see a world where every entrepreneur can afford a great story and that in turn, every one of us benefits from the power of that storytelling. Thank you.